Hello, and welcome to Professor Penn's Pony Perusal Program, and I'm your host, Professor Penn. Today, we will be looking at Episode 4 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, entitled Applebuck Season. The episode starts one of the rarest things in the entire series, an actual conversation with Big Macintosh. Too big for you to handle on your own. Come on, big brother. You'll need to rest up and get yourself better. I haven't met an apple orchard yet that I can't handle. Oops. Sorry. I'll take a bite out of this job by day's end. Biting off more than you can chew is just what I'm afraid of. In fact, Big Macintosh is a bit on the snarky side. Yep. But it really is great to see these two interact with one another. It really feels like a conversation between a brother and sister. But still only one pony. And one pony plus hundreds of apple trees just doesn't add up to... Don't you use your fancy mathematics to muddy the issue. I said I could handle this harvest, and I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna get every last apple out of those trees this apple buck season all by myself. As you have probably surmised, the underlying plot of this episode is that Applejack must bring in the harvest by herself. But first, we have to set up some future plot points. Hey! Oh no! Stampede! Namely, that the town is being threatened by a herd of stampeding cattle. And of course, it's none other than Applejack to the rescue! Applejack, but... This also nicely establishes that ponies aren't the only talking, sapien creatures in Equestria. So in recognition of her contribution, they throw a celebration honoring Applejack. It's here we learn about the other responsibilities that Applejack has agreed to. Did you see Applejack's slick moves out there? What an athlete! This week, she's gonna help me with my new flying trick, and I know it's gonna be so awesome! Exactly! And this week, I get to run Sugar Cube Corner for the first time! What does that have to do with Applejack? Oh! Applejack, one of the best bakers ever, is gonna help me! Applejack makes everything great, so free samples for every pony! <laughs> okay, that's great. Now, if I could just make a point without being injured... Twilight? Corrupted! Twilight? I'm so sorry, but I just wanted to mention that Applejack is also helping me this week with the official bunny census, where we count up all the new baby bunnies that were born this season. She's gonna help gather them using her wonderful herding skills. So we learn Applejack has taken on a lot of responsibilities at the same time she's supposed to get in a rather large harvest all by herself. And just as Big Mac anticipated, she is quite exhausted. Now, I say exhausted, but most ponies that see this are not thinking exhausted. <laughs> I sure do look funny. <laughs> woo, woo. Woo. <laughs> woo. Woo. Okay. Most ponies are thinking she got into the cider. Either way, Twally decides to check up on her. What on earth is that pony doing? Whoa. <sighs> Applejack! Wait, wait, hold up. What's with the teleporting now? Okay, look, I'm willing to believe that you have now mastered that skill, but there's no point for you to teleport. Wait, where are you? Oh, come on! You could easily walk that distance. There is absolutely no excuse for needing to teleport. Now you're just showing off. You are. Ah! Seriously! You're just showing off now. We get it. You know how to teleport now. Stop doing that! Okay, that's it. I'm done with the whole teleporting thing. Let's let's just move on, all right? So, ignoring Twilight's concerns, Applejack decides to continue with her agreement to help Rainbow Dash. Ready? One, two, three! 
It does not go very well. Culminating in Rainbow Dash doing her best Team Rocket impression. You're welcome! Things don't go much better when she goes to help Pinkie Pie. Daddy, I'll get the sugar and the eggs. Can you get me some chocolate chips? Uh, uh, what was that? Chocolate chips! Chips? Got it. Hater chips. A little salty and dry. Okie dokie. What next? Baking soda. Soda! Perfect! That'll get the tater chips nice and wet. This whole scene's pretty weak, unfortunately. I get that Applejack is so tired she's not supposed to be all that coherent, but she does know how to bake and she should know that there's something messed up with these ingredients. The jokes are funny, but I can definitely see some ponies banging their heads at this scene. Plus, take a look at this bowl. Even Pinkie Pie should know there's something not quite right here. Of course she doesn't, and they end up serving these baked goods to all these poor, unsuspecting ponies. No, not baked goods. Baked bad. That pun was bad, and you should feel bad. And finally, we have Applejack trying to help Fluttershy round up some bunnies. But here's a question. What made you think bringing a dog was a good idea? Now, to be fair, I don't think Applejack would have done any better if she was actually, you know, well rested. Rabbits are not cows, you cannot use the same herding techniques to round them up. This is even represented within the confines of the episode. Oh, and this is not my editing, they basically redo the exact same shots from the opening stampede. So this was a deliberate attempt to show a comparison between the two events. By having this analogy between the two stampedes, we are shown just how bad things truly could have been. Fed up with all this, Twilight confronts Applejack one last time. Your apple bucking hasn't just caused you problems, it's overpropelled Pegasus, practically poisoned plenty of ponies, and terrorized bushels of brand new bouncing baby bunnies. I don't care what you say, you need help. <laughs> that all might be true, but Applejack only cares about one thing. She did what she said, and she harvested all the apples all by herself. How'd you like them apples? Oh, how do you like them apples? This is why I wish Big Macintosh got more lines. So, realizing how in over her head she is, she promptly passes out. So, Applejack learns to ask for help, and we all learn that Twilight is much better at her job. Seriously, look at that, why does she even need the others? Now, this episode does a great job structuring itself. Plot points are well established early on in the episode, and earlier plot points are referenced later on. There is, however, an issue with the moral of this story. Now, the moral itself of not biting off more than you can chew and asking for help is a good moral and is well established in this episode. However, much of this episode was instead about her helping other people. Now, knowing when to tell your friends no is also a good lesson, but it's difficult to teach both these lessons in the confines of the same story. Pretty ironic that the only real flaw of this episode is them trying to tackle too much at a time. Well, that's all for today, so join us for the next Professor Penn's Pony Perusal Program. You can go past, but it's not quite there. You can go off and say it's just not fair. A simple mare living simple dreams. Oh, and that's not quite as it seems. Derpy, where's Derpy? There she is.